So, we are live. I think. Check. Oh, yes, we are. Awesome. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. We are live here, me and Justin from Aftershoot, to show you some things. Um, let's wait like two seconds, see if anybody. Yeah, we can give them a minute. We could do that. You want to do this, the, the thing that we always do, right? Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> the most original, the most original time killer ever. You mean where are you from? Like me? Everybody. Chime Everybody. In a comment. Yeah. Where, where are you tuning yeah. in from? Yes. Tell us where you're from and tell us what you shoot too. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe pertain this a little bit more towards your specific genre. Yes. Tell us um, where you're from, what's your genre, and if you catch us in a replay, say, write replay. And I'm trying to invite people. I don't know if that works here. <laughs> Hello, Indianapolis. Oh, hey. I love Indianapolis. I used to live there. I've never been. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun. Small town, Indiana. Not small, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mid-sized town. I'm like, isn't Indianapolis like kind of- I know, it's not small. I was just like on the outskirts of it. <laughs> yeah, I used to live in New York City, small town, East Coast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, okay, so we have 13 people watching. Awesome, Ohio, um, Canada. Oh, I have comments here. Hold on. Yeah, I just turned them on in my view. So, hello, Ohio. Hello, Kelowna. That's how I'm going to say that one. Kelowna, Canada. Yeah. yeah, we had bad air quality here yesterday because of you Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> in DC, yeah. it was red. It was called purple. Yeah, it was pretty same. We're in, I'm in Connecticut, and it was quite not nice. Mm. I don't blame Canada. It's no. Not, it's not Canada's fault. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is Justin from Aftershoot, the co-founder of Aftershoot. And um, tell us, Justin, what is Aftershoot? For those, of, for those people who don't know what Aftershoot is. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks first for having me. Um, so I'm super excited to be here. Aftershoot, we're an AI culling and AI editing platform. Um, so essentially what we do is we use what we call magical unicorns um, to go through your images and help you sort them, get through them a little bit quicker, and then pre-edit them for you. Um, so it's really harnessing the power of AI in a way that lets you, the photographer, still be in control, still work within the 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 photos that you normally would. So you're not kind of relinquishing control to AI. Um, and it's kind of that happy middle ground. So it's not the, it's not the AI that everyone's afraid is going to take your jobs. It's the AI that's going to make your job better. Mm, yes. I love streamlining my workflow and have somebody else edit for me. And especially a program that will know my tweaks, you know? Um, so I do have a question for the boudoir photographers here, for the boudoir workflow. Um, so one main thing I see coming up is the question if the boudoir photos are, if the photos are private on on the app or if anybody else can like access and see them or whatever. This is my favorite thing to talk about. So um, Aftershoot is the only local software currently available, meaning that it's the only one that only runs on your computer. So there's only one time we require internet connection, and that's if you're training your AI profile. So anything you upload for the training, you do have to have internet because it goes up to our servers. We build a unicorn. It comes back down having learned your edit editing style. Um, but for the culling portion, there's a, a slider, which I'll actually show you um, when we do our little demo, that you can turn it off. And what it means is that Aftershoot won't continue learning from you because we won't be able to gather that data to understand. But it also means that nothing can leave your computer, right? So it's everything's locked and loaded. There's no previews or anything anywhere but where your actual files are. Um, mm -hmm. So it's the most secure way you can use AI because we're the only ones that there is no cloud involved. Um, mm -hmm. And the same with the editing. So when we actually edit the images, uh, once you've built your profile, it's on your computer and it's editing, 
those catalogs never leave your computer. Nothing ever goes anywhere. So it's all just local. So there's no worries, no risks. Um, you know, I know I'm not a boudoir photographer, but I know that would be probably my biggest fear is like what happens if somebody gets a hold of them somehow or, <laughs> you know, how do you prevent that? This is the easiest way to prevent it. You just don't have to even have them on the Internet. Yes. Oh, that's great. So um, let's start from the beginning, though. How do you even um, how do you call? How do you have after shoot call? I know I say that with a German accent, call the images. <laughs> and how do you, I know, like give your power away to just, you know, have this AI do the work for you, right? It's like a process that because you like to call yourself and like choose the images yourself. How, how does that even work? Like, is there anything you can tell after shoot not to do or to do or? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we do have a couple of different options available when it comes to actually like dictating what it does. So you can say you can turn off closed eyes altogether. So you can say, hey, if it's got closed eyes, I'm okay with that. Um, if you turn off blur, you can say, hey, it's okay. You know, if it's blurry, I'm all right with that. Um, but what we do really focus a lot on is actually just clustering similar images together. So we have these fancy unicorns that go in and look at how similar images look and then try and rank those images within those sets. So we suggest what would be the best one. Um, and so like with boudoir photography, there's a lot of really cool ways you can use this tool, whether you're, if you're doing in-person sales, it's because it's so fast. Um, you can actually like at the time it takes somebody to train, uh, change, you can have a pre-culled set of images to show clients. Um, and maybe I, are you okay if I just dive into presenting? Yes. Maybe that'll. Yes, let's do that. Let's. So, so I gave Justin a whole set, a whole session um, from, from me. <laughs> so he had like, I don't know, 700 photos or something? So uh, yeah, I guess 700 photos. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to walk through this process. So we're yes, going to the best thing, I think. restart. Actually, you know what? I'll start from scratch uh, so I can show that button. So this is after shoot. Um, here you can see all of your projects. You can see all of your statistics, how much time you've saved by using it. Um, and this is actually, I love telling this story. This is actually a true statistic. So um, for me, we what we did, this statistic is actually based on me. I called a thousand images. We timed it out and then figured out how long it took me per image to cull. And then we built this algorithm here just to show that if I actually culled 339,000 photos by hand, it would have taken me 66 days to do it. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so by culling that many photos, and again, some of these, I mean, I'm not actually, I, that's not actually my work all the time. I'm testing yeah. and doing stuff, but, but really like if I had manually culled that many photos that I would have got two months of my life totally taken away from me. Um, so having this here to really help with that is crazy. Mm hmm. So yeah. that statistic is my favorite because it adds up and it's slow and it may seem like, oh, it's only like, I only got one day back. But imagine if you just had one extra day, mm -hmm. just one day, what would you do with it? And for me, it's a lot more than that. Now with yes. editing and all of these things, it's, it's, it's wild. So yes. um, from your home screen, you would click on create new album in the upper left hand to the lower right hand corner. You can click on start culling. Um, and so this toggle here, after shoot is learning your style. Um, so normally it's defaulted to the on position so that we can actually learn what decisions you're making and how to better cull like you. Um, but that does require that internet and those previews to go up to our models to interpret them. So by simply turning it off, all your images are safe and nothing goes anywhere. It's all locked on your computer. So there's zero risk. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely a good one to have. Now I'm gonna come in, uh, you can drag and drop a folder right into Aftershoot if you'd like. Um, I'm gonna just find the folder here. I'm gonna import from this folder and I'm gonna click start culling. So now we get to decide how our cull is. This is really that question. What? How do I tell it what I want it to do or, or how to cull my images? Um, so the first and most important thing is choosing the genre. So if you're a boudoir photographer, definitely yeah. choose boudoir. And the reason is we have different you know, algorithms are different unicorns, right? That look at images differently. So in a boudoir session, we're going to be more accepting of images where they aren't like smiling and looking super happy, right? Because that's not totally not the, the boudoir vibe. Um, whereas in a, 
Whereas in a wedding or a portrait session or a family session, we do want a little bit more of that, you know, emotion value. So having those smiles and whatnot. Um, so that's super important. The next thing is the blur. So this is how we determine how, um, how harsh we are when judging the images for blur. Um, yeah. so and boudoir photography, Lina is a good way to go. Uh, mm -hmm. Because it's going to consider more images, even if they aren't technically as sharp. They can be in focus, right? Like maybe you're shooting at 1.4 and like you maybe just missed focus on the eye a little bit. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. because in boudoir, yeah. that, that works. Um, so lenient's definitely a good place to start with boudoir. Um, for weddings, I generally run it at moderate. That's my, you know, I'm a wedding photographer. So that's, I come from that perspective a lot. Uh, but moderate is good for that. If you're in a studio session, um, so you're shooting at like f5.6. And like, if you miss focus, you really, it's, it's a disaster. Um, you'd probably want to set it to strict. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so next up is the criteria for grouping duplicates. So this is where we actually make a lot of decisions. So First thing we have to do is put similar images together. So we're looking for images in which the pose looks similar, the expressions look similar, um, you know, all of those different pieces we start judging to try and put together into a group and then pick you the best image out of that group. Mm -hmm. so that means that if I set it to identical, it's, hey, I hit the shutter button twice in a row. It's the exact same photo. You can put those together, but any other changes should show me should like separate them out. I want to see them. Yeah. Whereas if I were to set it to loose, you're saying, Hey, if there's like body changes and position changes, you can just start putting everything together. If the pose changes, put as many things together as you can and try and pick the best one from there. So just quickly, how would that work for like, um, uh, emotive photographers, like photographers who bring lots of, um, emotion into their work and they do that by like basically overshooting, right? So they're doing many different, like they're taking many different shoots of like one situation and there's just like a small little change in the photo. How would that work with that? Um, so in that case, I would probably set it to loose or similar-ish. So I would want to be on this end of the scale because I'm taking a lot of photos and I'm okay if they kind of come together because it may be a subtle change, but there's something else at play here. We have a, like a special unicorn that looks at the similarity of the images, but also um, how long it's taking you to take the photos. Oh. So if you said identical, yeah. we also put a time limit to it. So we say, hey, you can't take, you know, pictures like this and, you know, stick them together. Oh. Whereas loose, that sort of changes. I can't talk too much about it. It's like proprietary stuff. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but okay. I, I, on, a, on a general scale, there's some some extra barriers in there um, to kind of help prevent yes. use. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That makes sense to me. Totally. So we're going to actually run your session on loose because uh, we had like 700 photos. I I was so fortunate to actually have some time with these to look at them and play with them a little bit. Um, yeah. So I can actually go in and really see, you know, that loose is probably the best position for it. Cause there's a lot of, again, that emotion, you're kind of shooting through a moment. Um, so I'm okay if they all come together. Yes. Yes. And I do that a lot too. I just, because Outside, I shoot like this, and sometimes uncon unconsciously, I do that, and I'm like, wait, I just took 10, 10 photos of the same part. Uh, okay, so I do that unconsciously. You know? my, my running thing is that I am I I shoot on Nikon, um, so I don't expect a lot of things to be in focus, so I usually take five of the same thing. Um, just <laughs> That's my running my running joke that I always kind of drop. I, I love my Nikons, right? But uh -huh. um, definitely, <laughs> I always overshoot because I... I just feel like at least one of five has to be in focus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Usually it's more, but sometimes it is just the one. <laughs> um, so I feel like to, to, to um, overshoot in that sense. So for me, similar ish and loose are, are really the place to be. Yeah. Okay. Now down here, this is uh, the selections out of each duplicate set. Um, so what this means is that just we made, let's say we made a group of 10 photos here. So 10 very similar photos. If you set it to less, you're saying just pick one of the 10. If you set it to more, you're saying pick three out of the 10. Show me a lot of diversity. Mm -hmm. So this is just another way you can really adapt and adjust the final results. Um, we do have a highlights feature. It's not really designed for boudoir. Um, so, you know, we've made some improvements to it. I personally don't use it as well. Um, I just don't 
you know, I'd rather pick my highlights because I'm super particular. Uh, I'm like, I want to showcase these things on the internet. Um, so yeah, that's that. And then down along the bottom, closed eyes, you can always turn that off. So if closed eyes have no importance or value to you, if we get rid of any closed eye images, you can just turn that off and we'll show you all the closed eyes too. Mm -hmm. um, and same with blur. If you're, you know, generally the type of photographer who likes to have like kind of that soft blurry look to images, you can turn that off. But I am going to say one really important note is that Aftershoot's designed to give you one of everything. So if you were to take five out of focus photos in a row, we're still going to give you a version of it because we believe that was a creative intent, right? Oh. Most people don't, unless they are Nikon shooters, most people don't take five out of focus pictures in a row. That's uh, scary because I'm also a Nikon shooter. <laughs> uh, so essentially, you know, we're, we're, we're making some, some assumptions that like closed eyes, you know, repetitive closed eyes, repetitive blurry photos, those are intentional, usually. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're not. Sometimes they are the Nikon photographers. But uh, yeah. yeah, I pretty much will never, ever be sponsored by Nikon at this point. Um, but yeah, so it's a, <laughs> those, kind, you know, <laughs> those kind of things that we can, you know, we want to give you a representation. So uh, yeah. then you would just simply click start culling, let it run through and do its thing. I'm not going to do it because it takes about four minutes and I've already done it. So we'll just <laughs> we'll go to one that's already done. Yeah. Um, and so here, yeah, it took five minutes and eight seconds. Um, so here we have our magical set of curated images. So we started with 700 photos. We ended up that had four that were marked as closed eyes. Mm -hmm, 100, mm -hmm. 102 out of focus images because they're not. <laughs> See? <laughs> I told you. Uh, and then we have 241 selections. Okay. And there's 241 out of 700 that you should look at. Now, of those 241, 43 of them are images that we have marked as warnings. So I just clicked on this warnings tab. And okay. what it's going to do is actually just tell me that there's something off with these, whether it's closed eyes, whether it's blur, uh, oh. but we wanted to show you it. So like this first one, obviously closed eyes, closed eyes, closed eyes. So it's still selected. It's still shown. Um, but then something like this, oh. um, that's Nikon in action. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to agree. <laughs> so... It's showing me again. It didn't. You, we you took two of the same photo, two very out of focus photos, and it doesn't know if you did that on purpose, if that was some like you know, some intentional effect that you were going for. So it decided to just give you a version of it. So I can hit the X key and reject that, and it's gone. Same here. Uh, just another version of that. So it's giving us a lot of extra imagery, a lot of representation. So you can see that it's not doing those difficult decisions uh, and totally messing up your shoot where you're like, oh, I really wanted that kind of blurry or closed eye version. Mm -hmm. So it's giving you a nice representation. Okay, I like that, yes. Yes. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna teach you guys one of the, I'll teach you first the, um, the workflow for a boudoir photographer doing in-person sales. Um, so this is one that I love teaching because uh, I know a lot of photographers, boudoir photographers, they love to kind of do a nice fast turnaround um, or they only want to retouch a handful of images. So mm -hmm. they're trying to really narrow it down. So what I've found works really good for boudoir photographers in, or photographers in general who do IPS is using this feature called My Selections. Oh, Okay. So what this means is that I can go through with the client and I can actually, because we are unlimited culling and unlimited editing, I could run it through the editing and export the JPEGs and actually show them edited photos and have them pick their edits or their, their edited from edited photos, mm -hmm. their favorites using the My Selections tab. So what it means is that I could come through this, you know, set up here. I have 239 photos now. I can walk through and they, I can say, hey, do you love this photo? And they say, yes. Mm -hmm. So I could click on this circle and now it's added to my selections. Yes. And then I could come down to uh, like a set like this, where I have this plus three mm -hmm. that it found three very similar images. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is actually go through. Which one do you like best? Yeah. If I can say, hey, do you like this photo? And they say, yeah, but I don't love my face or my hand. Mm -hmm. say, oh, let me see. Oh, how about this one? And I say, ah, that's the one. I love it. So mm -hmm. I can add that to my selections, right? So it's added to my selections. It's it's that, you know, new version. 
So I can really whittle it down. And then what that means is that if I had 239 photos, now I just have the 13 that the client asked for. Mm -hmm. I already did. I was already playing with this before. Yeah. <laughs> so I could, I could, I, I picked out just a handful just to show yeah. that. Right. So here's 13 different photos and I can say, okay, great. These are the ones that I'm going to go edit. I'm going to retouch. I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do to them. Um, so I've really kind of curated that selection with the client sitting right next to me. Yeah. Because it only took five minutes for the call to happen. So, and what it means is that it also, I don't have to show them like these, a lot of these. <laughs> right? you know, I didn't even know that I had all of these in there. And I gave these. <laughs> yeah. So, so they don't have to see that. Like I, I, I they don't have to know the pains of being a Nikon shooter here, um, <laughs> right? They don't have to know that this is what actually happens sometimes because I'm getting rid of a lot of those. Uh, and some of these closed eyes, you know, most of them are, are things that are represented elsewhere, yeah. uh, right? Like I, I actually have a, my selections here for this photo already. Um, so I definitely somewhere um, like something similar to it uh, where she had her head turned instead, but yeah. you know, like I've, I've already, gone through. So in yeah. this case, I just got, there's like 106 photos that they're not going to necessarily need to see right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And there's 340 that are tucked away that are just kind of hidden behind. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So it makes it super easy to just, again, present something awesome to your client. Now, yes. if you're not an IPS photographer, then you can just use this as a regular culling platform, which is super awesome and easy. So same exact concept. Uh, if I got 239 photos and I wanted to add, say, just 50 photos, I just want to edit 50 photos, I can use that My Selections feature to just pull out the 50 I want. Yeah. Or if I, let's say I wanted to give them 200 photos or 150 photos, I can use keyboard shortcuts to just go through. So they're all right up here. Um, the X key is to reject. The A key is to add something. The S key switches it. Um, and period and comma, those are kind of the main ones. Those will show me all the similar ones. So I can just start rejecting away all these photos that I don't want. You know, they're, they're all beautiful, Jasmine. I'm not rejecting them for any reason other than showcasing, <laughs> other than showcasing what's going on. Like, I, I don't know how you would ever narrow this down. Um, so like here I have a plus seven. So I can always say, mm, I don't like the one that it selected. Right? Right. Her hands cut off. I'm, I'm not into that. Mm -hmm. And then have this one that maybe I, oh there's one that I maybe want so now yeah. I can just hit the s key and it switches the selections for me mm -hmm. so I can really use this as a regular culling tool if I want right so I can get rid of all these extra photos um, I can add some in so like in this case I love her hand right there but maybe I want the one with her hand up as well maybe I want both versions so I'll hit the a key and now you can see they're both selected so now I'm just, you know, fine tuning what the AI has done. So again, you don't have to really relinquish the, the freedom and the control behind a session. Um, you can still review it and, and using these keyboard shortcuts and these different tricks, you can really find the way to, to curate what the AI is helping you with. Because yeah. most of the time, you know, for me, most of the time, the AI selection really does do a pretty good job, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there, I'm not arguing with a lot of them. Sometimes it's just a, a couple here or there, right? Like I can look at this photo. I didn't shoot these, so I don't, I'm not positive, but like, I, I like that photo. Yeah. I don't know if there's going to, if I even needed to review the other ones. Hmm. And it learns from you, right? So yeah. however you choose your edits out of that, it learns what you like most, right? Yeah. So, so in this case, like, I'm like, okay. This, I actually, this is the one that I probably would have picked. As an artist, you may have picked a different one. I'm not sure. Probably that one. That one where she looks up in, in the, into the light. <laughs> that uh, one. <laughs> that one. Okay. Yeah, so that's the thing. Like, it's these kind of, these, these fine tunes that we can do as yeah. photographers, you know, still having that control. But if I get to a photo like this with the plus eight, I actually don't, this one, I, I love this one. I don't know if I need to look elsewhere because this is perfect for me. Yes. So I don't need to spend the time. And actually, I it definitely, I think it picked the, oh, that one's pretty good oh, too. Nice yeah, that <laughs> one's pretty good. Um. So yeah, that, so that would be like the thing to just let go, right? If you have a lot of, a lot of sessions and you have a lot of editing to do and you don't really have time to sit there for hours, you know, you just want to maybe just give the, give the power to the AI and just have the AI do all the stuff. 
and then maybe go, go back later and see if there are one or two or three more pictures that that you might want to put into, you know, that maybe the AI missed or whatever. Um, that's how I that's how I would do it. Yeah, I you know the 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 way I teach this to everybody is like when you're going through, you see this photo, this I would not change this. This is a bombshell, right? This mm -hmm. photo is amazing. So I'm not looking at the other six ones because there's nothing you could do to make this photo better in my eyes. Yeah. Okay. And so that's kind of how I look at it. But then if I get down to one where, you know, I can look at this one, I can see her stiletto kind of comes off. Yeah. Actually, this one's fine, but I like the foot position here. So I'm going to first reject that one. And then I'm going to see if there's one. There you go. Mm -hmm. Then I didn't like that the stiletto cut off. So I do want to see another version. But if I'm scrolling through and I don't see like, you know, these are all single images. Um, so like here, if I like this photo, I don't need to go find another version of it. Yes, that's right. And it's, and it's, that. Yeah. And, and in this case, it did a good job. It picked that one because this one's not in focus at all. <laughs> yeah, <get> me again. <laughs> so again it's, it's just that kind of helper and and it adds up over time so let's just say that had i gone through 700 photos one by one it probably would have taken me a good 30 yes. minutes 35 minutes give it or takes take a lot. it takes a lot of time to go through and, these. and if i were to actually go through using this system i could probably get through these in about 10 so yeah even if it's just 20 minutes, 20 minutes per session, if you do 50 sessions, that just keeps adding up, right? The more you use it, the more you're into it, the, the more time that you really get back. So, yeah. um, you know, it's all of those little minute savings that as business owners, we're, we're all kind of looking for. I mean, that doesn't matter what type of photography or if it's just five minutes here, five minutes there. Um, these little time grabs are huge. Yeah, it is. Okay, we have some no some comments some questions who have already been answered and let's go to the editing part hmm? awesome yeah. so yeah. what we'll do i'll show you now that we've gone through our our call we have our selections um what i would do to get out of here i can either click export and i can open them up in lightroom classic or capture one now for right now we're only editing in lightroom classic so if you're a Lightroom Classic user, you are in luck. If you're using Lightroom Mobile or Bridge, uh, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. <laughs> but <laughs> wink, wink, uh, yeah. things are coming. So uh, what I would do, for in my case, I just actually select all. Okay. And I drag and drop them right into Lightroom. So what will happen is it'll just open up Lightroom and it'll ask me to just import those files. It's not going to because they're already imported, um, but it would say, hey, do you want to import these 234 photos? Okay. So I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to close Lightroom because I'll show you how long it takes to edit something. Okay. Um, so now what we're going to do is show you the editing portion. So they're imported into Lightroom and then I'll just head back and simply say, start editing. So the way our editing works, it's AI that learns from you. So what we're doing is actually learning the habits that you do when you edit. Um, so what happens when you're editing in outdoor conditions? What happens when you have incandescent lighting or window light? What are the adjustments you usually make to get to an endpoint? So to get started, you would need to upload catalogs to us. We recommend 5,000 photos, but it's a minimum of 2,500. Um, so you can start with 2,500 photos that are edited in the Lightroom catalog, and you can upload those to us. You can do multiple catalogs um, as well, but you upload those to us. We learn all these things about you and then ship you down your own little magical unicorn to edit. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's my favorite part about Aftershoot. It's awesome. It's unlimited <laughs> as well. The editing's unlimited, so you can edit as many things as you want, as many times as you want. Um, I personally, a lot of times actually end up editing entire weddings, like all 5,000 photos. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if I decide that later, I want to like add some extra stuff back in, they're already edited. So I can just be like, oh yeah, I'm going to just pull a couple extra photos um, out of the, out of the, the whole wedding and, and deliver them. Right. Especially if I'm like, huh, I only got like 900 photos and I told them it was a thousand. So I got to go search for a hundred photos um, mm -hmm. to kind of land into there. I can do that as well. Um, so 
to get started with the editing, we're just going to select a catalog. So this is that catalog. It has Jasmine's photos in it. Um, and we're going to choose the AI profile. So I actually, I did some, so don't judge it too much. Um, I actually did a fake profile based on some of Jasmine's work. So I created two different ones, Daughter of the Moon and Veronica. So that's the wandering, right? I think we um, said Daughter of the Moon is Wildcats Wander, set also set with, with a German accent. And Veronica is actually, some of you guys know Veronica from the Boudoir Tones. And I've used it outdoors too. And we're going to show you that. Yeah. Awesome. So we have Veronica um, for this one. I'm going to run Adobe Standard. Um, but you can choose Adobe Color. I just normally run Adobe Standard because I, I don't, I like the contrast a little mm -hmm. bit less. Actually, yeah. what, do you, what do you normally do? I am on Adobe Standard. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we're running on Adobe Standard. I connected that Lightroom catalog, right? So I just chose my most recent Lightroom mm -hmm. catalog. I'm going to click on continue. And now what I need to do is just find Jasmine's photos. So I'm going to start, just search. Um, oh no, it was for Justin. So we're going to just take those and I'm just telling it to edit the five star photos that I imported. So I have all of them in there, but I'm going to just for the sake of you not watching a screen load, uh, we'll just edit 254 photos. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to edit these in that Veronica style. It's going to take just about a minute or two um, to go through. So when it comes to building that AI profile, I'll kind of walk backwards. Um, yeah. When it comes to building that AI profile, it's really important to show it diversity in your work. So you mm -hmm. don't necessarily want to show it what happens when you only have the best session ever. You want to show it what happens when you have tricky lighting and what happens when it's um, when your session isn't necessarily the ideal circumstances, but you make it work um, because then it really learns how to compensate all of those things. Mm -hmm. And just like that, we edited 254 photos. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was yeah, so I know I was like, oh man, this is a, this this should take a couple minutes. I'll be able to <laughs> yeah, a little bit of time. So um, I'm actually going to pop into yeah, something. Um, I'll show you. Those are my wedding photos, so I'll actually mm -hmm. show you what it did to the wedding photos. Um, so again, this profile that we built, it's a fake profile, so it's not going to be a hundred percent there because what I did is I actually took a bunch of my photos and just mm -hmm. applied. Uh, the pre <laughs> the embrace presets to it and then retrain and trained a new profile based on that. So it's gonna it's gonna do pretty good, but it's not gonna be great. Um, you know, <laughs> it's gonna have some things that are a little bit off because we shoot in different styles. Um, yeah. but these are all just AI edited, right? So this mm -hmm. was our before and this is the after, right? It did everything, nothing done by a human being here, all just yeah. that learned processes. Uh, which is and this learns right so when you take these photos and make the tweaks to it in lightroom the next yep. time you run this right it will run it will ed actually edit this with your tweaks it learns from you and gets better and better and better and better exactly and so it'll start learning the kind of the the nuances because on a broad scale this is pretty good right it's it's yeah. adjusting the sliders uh, yeah. which is actually it's interesting how the sliders are adjusted i know right and turn very, down the exposure a little bit and let's see what that what that would yeah, do. If we turn down this exposure a little bit. Totally looks like embrace, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I generally my the my images end up getting brighter. That's why it's going for that yeah. brighter. Um so like that's why, you know, it's looking at it like this. Um so it's looking at what I'm doing, how I would normally expose. Um, for this image, I usually brighten them up like this. So that's why it's kind of like that. And I also did one with daughter of the moon. So we kind of, I already ran it. Yeah. Um, one of the cool things about after shoot, I'll pop back really quick is that you can actually just keep running it again and again. So if I click on edit again, it just starts me back to the last screen and asks me what profile I want to use, make sure the catalog's the right one. So I can run it over and over and over under all these different profiles. So mm -hmm. I can have a whole bunch of looks. So I have like Veronica, I have daughter of the moon. Um, I was playing with somebody else's profile here. Uh, so you, know, you can really just like, you can experiment and do, you know, kind of find what may be the better edit on any one of the profiles that you're using. Yes. Which is super cool. Like I, I actually forgot I was going to run this under black and white before. Um, oh yeah. So that you could you could see. I didn't build a black and white from yours, but I do have a black and white profile. I yeah, love. And you can totally show that. 
Do you see this picture? I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this this edit just like. Yes, I love the edit. The grain and everything is just like amazing. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's cool to be able to really go from from you know. From, a to yeah. B. I mean, this is this is our import, right? So it's yeah. it's doing a good job keeping some of these highlights in check yeah. um, while still kind of pulling back a little bit of the shadows, so it's not totally. Uh, lost again you, I know it's stylistic decisions but um, so again these are all different lighting conditions right so we're looking at window light here versus that really awesome light that you have um, which I love that awesome light um, and then here's like kind of you know a little bit more window but then yeah. we'll come to this photo because um, I love this mm -hmm. so again, it's editing these this is kind of it looks like mixed lighting like maybe a yes. window and a, and a yeah, there's like a cheap Amazon light on that side of hers and then some a natural light. <laughs> yeah, so it's cool that it just, again, like the, the tones and everything, it's all, it's embraced. It, again, it may be a little bit darker to be embraced, but uh, that's because it's learned my style. But uh, even as like this other profile, it's just done a lot yes. from, from this. So I love, I love this. It's like also for me to see now the, like how you, how, how AI edited this, in a different way it's i actually because i told you i don't know i did not really know how to edit some of these and now i have like new ideas <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's it's pretty cool to be able to um again just have have this kind of unique perspective on things and and the thing about ai is that it's it's not subjective which mm -hmm. is sometimes annoying but a lot of times really great because what happens is Last year I was doing all my, I, so I spent a lot of time, I'm a wedding photographer. I shoot about, uh, last year I shot 55 weddings um, in the year. So I was busy, but we were developing this editing at the same time. So what was happening was I was building sneak peeks for my clients and then I was not delivering their weddings right away. I was taking like, you know, six to eight weeks because I had to test a bunch of stuff over and over again. Yeah. Right? I had to make sure that they were all uh, all these algorithms we were working on were changing and working. So I wouldn't deliver a wedding. I'd edit it under all these new test conditions. Um, and what I found is that when I'd go back to actually edit them, the sneak peeks that I edited by hand weren't as good as the ones that the AI did. Yes. Because the AI doesn't have moods. It doesn't have weird lighting conditions. Yeah. It just has what the information it's given. Um, so it just knows, okay, I need to, I need this exposure or this white balance and it's not based on mood. Yes. And what really strikes me with the AI is that it, it does nail the skin tones. And yeah. I spent a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of time working on yeah. that. Um, so definitely a, a cool, a cool piece. I love this. This grain to me is like. The grain. Yeah. That's in my preset. I love it. <laughs> but these edits are stunning. Um, so, I mean, the, everything about the, the shoot and everything, it's all just gorgeous. So, um, and then, so like you will find that sometimes you will want to tweak some things and make some adjustments. So you yeah. would just go through your normal Lightroom workflow. Like, again, mm -hmm. just from me, from my perspective, I would probably be pulling the shadows up a little bit more and the highlights down and then probably getting rid of some, maybe I would even just tweak the reds. Yeah. Um, Probably. Something I think it looks like it's reflecting off of here. So I would make some adjustments to some of these. Um, but again, this is never a condition. I'm actually surprised that this profile did this well yeah. because these are not conditions I've ever photographed in. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. it's much just assuming based on what I would normally do that this is how it should be edited. Um, mm -hmm. And like 90% of my work is outdoors or mm -hmm. with off camera flash. Yes. So that have kind of natural natural lighting indoors is like not my forte so this is amazing that it's even this close yes i love it um but show us some of your uh, weddings outdoors i really loved how um how the ai edited these i know not in your style but that's how <laughs> i edit outdoors <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so there definitely there's definitely some overexposed ones. Um, so I'll I'll pop in here. Um, so this is my my profile. This is how my profile would have looked. Um, but here's Daughter of the Moon. That one's super blue. Um, so I yeah, that, that one is not for yeah, that one didn't crush it. Um, but we actually were we right before this started, we were looking at these, and I was like, I feel like I could change my style now. Um, because like so Veronica looks amazing. It just, it's, 
just and it's not because that's my wife's name. It's because that's <laughs> <laughs> it's just I, I love the look of it. We were looking at especially when I get into like these sort of green pictures. Um, it just looks so good. And again, just to reference, like very underexposed. That's my normal style. Um, and yeah. that is Daughter of the Moon, which is, again, if you turn it down, is pretty nice. Um, but Veronica to me is like. Yeah, Veronica got the good skin tones. The Daughter yeah. of the Moon. It's like I more. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So again, that's my edit. And then this is the before. Um, so yeah, it's just learning all these little nuances. Um, so here we have before, and then we have uh, daughter of the moon, and then we have Veronica. Veronica's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm, I, I'm really starting to debate how I transition into Veronica now. I mean, look at that. That's so perfect. I know Veronica would love that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so it, it, it's, it's cool that it's working in all these conditions. So here's an, I like this one too. Um, this is what really sold me on Veronica, <laughs> uh, but, you know, so here's your, here's my edit, here's the before, and then that, um, and then we'll go to the Veronica, which is again, just turn it down a little bit and it's, and it's there. Um, so again, subtle tweaks, just super stunning to have that. And actually, yes. I was a little surprised that it even did decent on the off-camera flash. Oh, yes. I turn it down a little bit, but off-camera flash is, is big. And I love to show this one thing. So um, this is really important that I love just for me to show off how the AI can actually learn different conditions. So if you're a photographer who's doing a large variety of work, um, so like you just have a diverse set of things, this is what off-camera flash for me looks like edited when it comes to sunset. I'm always mm -hmm. pulling my highlights back and my shadows up because I really, I want to bring out some of the yeah. detail that was lost, but I'm really, I'm trying to make this guy look brilliant and keep my subjects good. Uh -huh. But then I, I, also, I like to do some like high contrasty stuff. And so if you watch these sliders, when I go to the next photo, uh, they actually do the opposite now. So the oh. highlights come up and the shadows come down because it's understood that this is a different condition and that I'm looking for contrast. And mm -hmm. the way it understands this is because I've given it lots of examples. I've shown it. The best way to put it is these are, this is like an editor that you can't communicate with. So you can't yeah. say, Hey, I want you to edit these photos like this. Yeah. Instead what you have to say is here is a hundred photos edited in fluorescent lighting I want you to learn how to edit fluorescent lighting. Mm -hmm. So it's going to, it takes that repetition to do it. You can't just say, hey, when you're, you know, because if you if you hired a, an assistant, a human being, you would say, okay, whenever you see sunset photos, bring the highlights down, the shadows up. Yeah. I can't do that with AI. You can't direct it to do that. Um, so you would just instead say, here's a hundred sunset photos. Learn how to edit these based on what you've seen, what mm -hmm. I'm teaching, what I'm showing you, what I'm teaching you. Um, and actually, we didn't even look at Veronica. Let's see how Veronica did over here. <laughs> look at that. This is, this is a great photo. I love this photo. Thank you. Yeah, I'll hang this on my wall. <laughs> uh, this is, I always come to this one because this is extremely underexposed. Um, so just like tricky lighting with the light bouncing off. So very underexposed. And Veronica crushed it. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> No, after shoot plus Veronica crashes. Yeah, yeah, after shoot plus Veronica, but you know, even together, it's awesome. Yeah. Daughter of the Moon even looks pretty good here. Yeah. Um, so it's it's pretty cool just to have harness the power of AI right in your pocket. Um, totally. You know, you can do so much with all of this, right? So you can have multiple profiles. You can run through your edits over and over again. Um, so here's Veronica, a little bit bright, but I take it down a touch, and I'm in like mm -hmm. that. Looks awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's just it's it's really cool to be able to uh, to just kind of experiment and play with all of these different profiles and and styles and having the AI just take it from like again really underexposed because yeah. I'm trying to retain some stuff here uh, to having that's my profile and then that's Veronica <laughs> just turn it down a little bit and we're in. And you uh, don't have to figure this out yourself. Like you don't have to. Figure this out yourself. The AI will do this for you. And the yeah. best thing is, 
it learns. And then when you use presets, it learns. It, it applies the presets with your tweaks, right? Yep. So yeah. If you use presets already, so if you're using the Embrace presets already, when you train that profile, um, we can actually apply a lot of the values that are static. Mm -hmm. um, so I think actually this is it kind of looks like that. So when if I were to put Veronica on, mm -hmm. none of these sliders are ever going to change. Mm -hmm. any, any of the stuff you do down here, um, because uh, I've, ne I've never used I've never changed them. Okay. Um, so because they that's just what Veronica uses, um, mm -hmm. like all of these as well. I don't use texture clarity, vibrance, mm -hmm. any of that sort of stuff. So because that's the existing style of the preset, it's just going to default to those values and just tweak the exposure and, and any of these sliders that I would have it normally tweak. Yes. Uh, which is cool. And I, and again, I am once again surprised that it's Veronica has come in and done a great job with this off camera flash set. <laughs> so <laughs> I have this set. So this, this is a kind of a curated set of photos because I can really kind of see what it does in different conditions. So like this is a direct off camera flash. Um, this is a bounce flash, so we'll see what it happens when I bounce it. Again, just turn it down a little bit, and it's in, in it to win it, which is awesome. Um, and then it is with a small modifier on it. And again, turn it down a little bit, and we're in it to win it. So Veronica's Veronica's in my new editing profile, I guess. <laughs> Yay! Here's another bounce off of a white ceiling, and boom. Like, that's amazing. Okay. I love it. So um, let's talk about the Founders deal um, that is still on for me, for you guys. Um, you can sign up today. You can do a free trial and then um, decide if you want it or not. It is um, $4.99, editing and culling. And trust me, you want the editing portion because it's going to get really good. This is yeah. going to be... In my opinion, AI editing is the future. And if you can really like use the presets that you love and use also your own editing style for it, it's just, and you have a lot of things to do and you don't want to spend your days. I know editing is fun. I love editing, but I don't always love editing. Like if I have a client session, I have like 500 photos. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't love it. I don't love calling. I do not love the editing because you know, I have to do it. I have to do it in a certain time frame, and that's just not, you know, really my thing. Versus when you just do it for fun and then you edit here and there, that's more fun. But when you do it, you know, that's your job. You have to do it. You have you have a deadline. You have to do it right. And the AI can really, really, really help you cut your time down and edit for you and in your style. That's just amazing. I'm, I'm gonna change your life right now. So even if you just are doing, I mean, if you're, you have to be making some money to want to spend the money, obviously, oh, but even okay. if you're, even if you're not overly slammed, um, the way the founders deal work is works is that you're actually locking in this price. Yeah. So this is like, this is your yearly price for $499. So that's it. So you will just, you will pay the same price over and over and over every year. So as you get busier, that's amazing. It's unlimited calling, unlimited editing. Everything that you dump in mm -hmm. is like every new feature. We're going to have AI masking coming very soon, right? So all of these things are built into that price. So it's going to lock you in for that price every year. Now, why does this matter? Because A, the price of things always fluctuates and, you know, so you're locking it in. But B, even if you're not super busy now, you can use this to get busy which is the, my, my favorite thing, which yeah. is, for me, it's like, I actually started photo. So my photography journey, I was started photographing in 2009. Um, I went full-time in 2016, starting in 2016. I never, I stopped doing personal work. I stopped taking photos for fun and it turned into, I need business. I need money. I need to survive. I'm full time, right? All of those things. And so I really kind of dropped off on doing stuff that I, you know, I used to take pictures of everything. I was like, oh, I love this. I love that. Mm -hmm. my, everything was just about photography. And then it was, it's just about my clients. Now that I have this tool, it's all about just making sure that my client's end is kept up. But I started taking photos again for my own personal, like, you know, yes. I'm like, I, I don't, 
it calls for me, it edits for me. Mm. For personal work, I may actually spend a little bit more time playing with it um, so that I can kind of experiment and learn some things. But my clients are getting consistent work mm. every time over and over and over again. And I'm just literally out here like, oh, look, a squirrel. I'm going to go photograph that squirrel, right? Like things that I, I just, I didn't do for so long. And that, yeah. and, and it's kind of returning that creativity. I mean, I was just asking in a Facebook group, like last week, I was like, I feel like my creativity has really, like, yeah. collapsed. I got yeah. to the point where I just all, it's work, 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 make money, make money, make money. And mm -hmm. my creativity and that inspiration, that excitement kind of faded. Mm -hmm. And now I'm into the point where like, I, I asked that like three or four days ago, but I realized all of a sudden every shoot that I'm having this week, like I have an engagement session today and I already know it's going to be bomb because I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, it is. I am going out there. My creative juices are running because the past two days I've just been taking pictures of things that don't matter. I'm like, oh, I'm taking a picture of a deer. And then I'm like, ooh, what if I do this and then try this? And I'm like, ah, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's more than just, hey, you can get your clients, your photos faster. Um, it's more than just a tool to help you do that. It's a tool to help you make money, but it's also really a tool just to like make you fall in love with photography again. Yes. And all the pictures of our kids that never make it, that are always stuck in Lightroom, they, yes. never, they never get printed. That, that, yeah. Mm -hmm. for, for my wife's birthday, she got a picture that I took of our children that was like, you know, a couple months old, but I would just sat on the computer. Cause I was like, I can't edit yeah. this. I don't have time, whatever it is, blah, yes. blah, blah. And then I was like, you know what? I got AI. I don't care. And I ran it through. I just Photoshopped a light out of it. And, and now she has a brand new picture hanging on the wall and she loved it, which is the last time we did that was 2018. Yeah. So like the last time we printed out a photo that I took, and we took it from start to finish was 2018. So it yeah. was literally same. five years. Yeah, I have the same problem. So I'm actually, I'm gonna go into Lightroom and I'm gonna pull all the, like I took some portraits of my kids with my mother, lo I don't know, six months ago, whatever. Yeah. And she already complained. She said, I'm never gonna see these photos. <laughs> so actually I'm gonna put them into AI now. That's actually, great idea <laughs> get them get them run through ai and and you know again it's just a tool that you can use any way you want mm -hmm. however you see fit but it's definitely like you said it's the future everything's kind of walking in there and uh you know now again you, you can choose it's a business tool and it lets it gives you creative freedom if you're growing your business this is a great time to harness this power because it is going to be so valuable in the future yeah. um then definitely you want to just hang tight and, and, and rock through the process, right? Learn how to use it now, because as you get busier, having this tool is, is life-changing. I mean, I, being in Connecticut back when I was only, when I didn't just do weddings and I did other you know types of sessions, September, October, November, it was seven days a week for a week on end because it was autumn. So it was like, oh, we got to go to the pumpkin patch and take photos and we got to do catch the foliage and all of those things. So back then it was like uh, that one of those first years I went full time, I thought I was like dying because it was so much work. Mm -hmm. But if I had these tools back then, I'd probably be much wealthier because I would have been yeah. able to keep my business afloat and do more things for marketing and, and taking on more clients and all of these sort of things. So again, you don't have to use it just to like use it for fun. You can yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> take this and say, okay, great. I'm going to spend less time behind the computer. Or if you're, you know, growing that business, you can say, hey, you know what? Instead of spending three hours editing, I'm going to spend an hour editing and I'm gonna spend yeah. two hours working on social media or making some content or some reels or, you know, researching SEO, whatever it is. So it's the time to harness the power and, and really just step up the game. So, yes, that's yes. So good. Um, thank you so much just yeah, for having me. This was uh, amazing information. Um, and um, yeah, so if you want, um, if you want to try the founders deal, it's only available here and through me and today, maybe for tomorrow. Um, 
and go. <laughs> I know. Hey, maybe tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so the founders deal, it's, it's limited time. So definitely, you know, click on the link. Uh, you can try it before you buy it. So you don't have to like dive in and we're always, we're, we're a cool company in general. So it's 24 seven in-app support. So there's always someone who answers. Sometimes it's even me. Like I watch the chats and if you have a question that I feel like a photographer can really give you a special clue on, I'll actually be in there answering some chats too. Um, but so it's 24 seven in-app support. Um, and we stand by what we do. So if, if you're unhappy with something, you know, we aren't going to say, Hey, too bad. You, you signed a contract and you're in, we're just like, yeah, okay. We can prorate your refund or whatever it may be. So even if you want to just lock in the price, just to lock in the price and try it out and see how it goes over the next two months and then decide to cancel, you can do that as well. Yeah. Uh, so definitely we're, uh, trying to change the way the industry has worked for a long time. Uh -huh. uh, so, you know, you could never find a company with in-app support before. Um, and as a photographer, these things were important to me when we yeah, started. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah. Yes, that's also why I love Aftershit because of you guys, you and Veronica. And what this, what Aftershit stands for, I really love it. And um, I have to thank Marietta down here in the comments. She's like really <laughs> answering comments. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, good. So I would say um we will go i will answer some of the questions in the comments if there are any left and um if you have any questions ask away you can also you know dm me and ask me anything um ask justin and thank you again thank you very much this was amazing all right thank you for having me <laughs> everybody bye